Hello, everyone. Welcome back to episode 37, where we are going to be discussing ankle impingement. I am your host, Dr. Janae Brown, and I am joined by my three favorite physical therapists. To my left is Dr. D. And to my right, Dr. Bay. And I'm Dr. Sandoval. Wonderful, wonderful. Favorite people. We're here uh, to just educate you guys and share with you all the great things about ankle injuries. And we're in our, uh, what's our third ankle diagnosis, ankle impingement. And Dr. Bay wrote this wonderful post for us, Dr. Bay. It's fully thorough and educational for you to get just so much knowledge. Just how I like it. (laughs) Spit out my coffee. (laughs) You're welcome. Oh my gosh. Um, and so Dr. Jam packed. It's jam packed and it's it's just amazing. <laughs> so and, and Dr. Bay is gonna tell us why she chose ankle impingement because it's not something we see very often. And but she, you know, she loves feet. So oh gosh. Um, <laughs> here we go again. Go. Oh my so well, Dr. Bay, share with us. Share it. Yeah. Well, I've had several cases of this in the last year or two in my dancer population. And this was, again, like you said, a syndrome we don't see a ton of. And this, I took this as opportunity to learn more. I had good successes with my cases, clearing their symptoms and improving their quality of dance. But I just thought I would like to dive in and learn more about the actual syndrome to help people more. And I think as we were just discussing before we came on to film, we do have patients with this syndrome but they may not have come in with the diagnosis ankle impingement on their script, but it's definitely present in the population more than we think. Yeah, absolutely. It is one of those diagnoses that often is just like ankle pain and and we're trying to figure out figure it out. And I was we were talking about that a little bit earlier. I'm like, I probably had a several patients with this problem, but didn't really know it was the problem. So Dr. Bay's breaking it down for us. But you know, I also had a sneaky reason for choosing this. Why well, you want more of these patients? Sure. But, <laughs> you know, I'm always trying to turn everyone into a dancer. That's true. Because dance rules the world. And this, I just thought this was a chance to steer the podcast a little bit more in the dance direction because this was an injury that we've mm. seen a little bit more in dancers. She's trying to subliminally influence all of us. Love oh, it. Big, big word. Yeah. She did it. Barely came out. <laughs> yeah, I know. She, she did it because I had no idea. So here we are. <laughs> gotcha. I'm going to be covering anatomy so I get to touch and hold Dr. Bay's foot. Um, not really her foot. But That's actually too big for my foot. Yeah, her yeah. foot is kind of smaller than Probably this. half of that. Yeah. This is – okay. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the foot. I'm going to go over anatomy. The foot is kind of a complicated situation um, and joint in – Why is it uh, so complicated? It's complicated. It's got lots of bones, little ones, big ones. It's just complicated. I mean, you look at this and you're like, what is happening in here, right? I'm going to break this down to just try to simpl- simplify it as as easy as possible for what we're going to be talking about today. So we have two long leg bones that are that are considered your leg. The shin bone, we call that the tibia. Um, that is the medial bone or the one on the inside. And then the one on the outside, the long bone on the outside is called the fibula. And it's long and skinny. Those come together and make sort of the front of your shin, essentially. Um, and then we have, it's really hard to see this, but below here, they kind of sit on top of the talus. So it's kind of a, a curved bone in here. Um, and they sit on top of that and those joints together kind of help us, uh, flex our feet. Essentially your foot goes on that talus and comes up. And then the other big bone on the back is your calcaneus. That's your hill bone. So if you have a, a hill spur or you have, you're filling the back of your heel. That is where your calcaneus is. And that is a little bit on the bottom of your foot as well. So those are the big main bones that we're going to be talking about as it relates to this particular injury. And there's a lot of little bones that probably are going to get impacted and the foot gets impacted with this injury, but um, we're, we're spending our time sort of talking about this area. How'd I do guys? I didn't talk about any muscles or ligaments because, well, I think Dr. Bay is going to cover some some of that. Maybe Dr. D will cover a little bit of that. I don't know. No, you're not. Not you me. Might. 
Not me. Okay. Either. Well, <laughs> okay. I'm done with anatomy. We're going to move on. Hopefully what the heck that was is- enough for you. <laughs> I hope so, because that's all you're getting. Um, Dr. Sandoval. Yes. Talk to us about what this thing is. What is ankle impingement? Why haven't people heard about it? What is it? And like, what are some risk factors? Why haven't people heard about it? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably just not commonly reported. Um, but as, as far as, yeah, it's not, yeah. it's not fancy. It's not, it's not mm-hmm. fancy, it's fancy. Mm-hmm. Um, but what it is, is, uh, abnormal interactions within those bony and ligamentous structures that you were just mentioning there. Mm-hmm. Um, so those bones and ligaments, if, and when they're moving about each other in an improper way, you can have this condition called ankle impingement. Um, there are also some other soft tissue structures that can be affected. Um, like those muscles that we did not mention, mm-hmm. um, but can be mentioned later. Uh, so this typically results so in... So we're going to still not talk about them? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Got it. Later. Glad we cleared this, that up. This can result in pain, inflammation, and then stiffness and just loss of range of motion typically. And um, as far as risk factors go, um, performing sports that require an excessive amount of dorsiflexion, which is pulling your foot up, or plantar flexion, which is... Uh, pointing your toes down, that can be a risk factor to this. Ankle injuries, previous ankle injuries can become a risk factor. Any other bony abnormalities uh, like those bone spurs that you mentioned can be a risk factor and a lack of a proper warm-up going into your sporting activities can also be a risk factor. Beautiful. And we th- we think about, because imp- we talk about, you guys have maybe heard of shoulder impingement, right? Impingement is one of those words that a lot of people in the medical community trying to get away from because it's just a big classification, but we're really talking about something being pinched somewhere like, and, you know, underneath the joint, within the joint, around the joint, something's pinching and like preventing you from having the movement you want um, and being able to be pain-free and all that stuff. So that's an easy way to sum it up, pinching. You did a, you did a blog called Shoulder Impinchment because it was kind of like. I did. You did. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Doctor D is so excited to talk to us time. about uh, the know. differences in. Did you, oh, did it could you? have been his first. Were, Were you there here? for sure? Unsure? No. No, no. I don't think so. Oh, lucky. Yeah, I think it was like lucky. Lucky. I came in right after that. Probably. Yeah, I remember you guys talking about it, but yeah, no, but it was a good one. He just likes pinching. Yeah. <laughs> She likes pinching things, which is why we're now on ankle impingement. <laughs> oh, God. Right. What else are we talking to talk about? <laughs> You'll find Thank out. You. If you stay tuned, you will find out what her next impingement is going to be about. Um, Dr. D, he's super excited. He wants to talk to oh, us God. about um, posterior and mm-hmm. anterior uh, impingement. And so he's going to tell us about the two, what they are, differences, things that you guys need to look out for. So, Dr. D. I kind of think I just did half of it for you. Yeah, you guys both <laughs> kind of finished my entire part for the most part. Yeah, but his main uh, two main types of ankle impingement, she kind of just mentioned it. Anterior means front, so it's going to be impingement on the front side of the ankle. Typically happens with some of the things that actually Dr. Sandoval talked about with repetitive uh, dorsiflexion, which is your toes pointing up, and inversion, meaning the toes pointing in as well, so repetitive motions of that. And it usually happens with, or is more of a tendency with people that have higher arches. Higher arches means there's less mobility in general within the foot itself too. So that's going to be restricting some of that motion. Could develop bone spurs, uh, soft tissue entrapments going to happen, whether if it's tendons or muscles. And sensation-wise, it feels like there's a little bit of a block in front of the ankle. Mm-hmm. So with whether if it's stepping down from, say, stairs or squatting or lunging or whatever it may be and that's usually when you start to feel some of that blocking in the front and it can cause some type of swelling uh ankle might feel like it's about to give way things like that so um that's the anterior so the front side now on the contra um on the opposite side there's the posterior ankle impingement uh also known as the dancer's heel i believe um and that comes from the opposite right so it's going to be more repetitive motion with uh, the toes pointing down and in and that comes with obviously from dancing from being on point, uh, jumping, hopping, things like that. And the symptoms are going to be primarily on the backside of the ankle with that one right over here. 
and uh, pain is going to be exactly where they just mentioned, and the ankle can sometimes feel like it's locking in that position as well, unless there's other things that are involved with that one. That's great. I think you did a great job. Okay. That's all I got. Did you sweat? (laughs) Huh? I got it. He's the professor. (laughs) He never sweats. Calm and collected. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. D. That was wonderful. Dr. Bay is going to talk to us about treatment options because Dr. Bay is the one with the most experience with this particular injury. And so she's going to like just give us all she has, basically. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we're going to absorb it. Get so, ready. Get ready. Here so it comes. talk to us about some treatment options and talk to us about things that we can do to prevent this problem. I'd love to. Okay. So... One of the things I really liked about discussing this syndrome is that physical therapy is going to be the primary treatment option and the first um, plan of care. If physical therapy is unsuccessful, surgery can be considered, but it would definitely be after several months of physical therapy being unsuccessful. Surgery might be necessary to remove a bone spur or repair some soft tissue structures, or if you have an ankle bone abnormality. Maybe it could clear that up, but let's focus on the physical therapy interventions that we can perform. So when we first see patients here in our center, we want to always talk to them about modifying our activity levels so that the structures that are involved can heal. So this means don't do anything. Yeah, right. (laughs) This means keep working your butt off, but we are going to adjust your ranges of motion, adjust the load, adjust the volume so that your structures can heal, but you can still keep working on your athletic competency. The next thing we can address is the flexibility and mobility of your ankle joint. So flexibility means more soft tissue structures and mobility means the actual interaction of our ankle joints and foot joints. So this can be done through exercise intervention or manual therapy intervention. I typically use a combination of both with my patients. Um, The next really important one is progressive strengthening. So again, I like to, in terms of keeping symptoms under control, strengthen in shorter ranges in the beginning, more double leg where we can keep the symptoms low, but kind of work, say if they have posterior impingement, people may work on a partial heel raise, but not full. Same thing for anterior impingement? Can you do a partial range squat or step up or down that's a lower height? So you're using the dorsiflexion, but not quite as much as full range. And then as the ankle strengthens and heals, we progress that into varied stances, deeper ranges, higher loads. Uh, The last or two more. Can I have the foot, please? You may. You may have the foot. Can I give her the foot? Sure. Not mine. (laughs) Thank you so much for allowing me. (laughs) It's hers. I think her name's on the bottom. I'm just kidding. (laughs) We have a label maker. We can make that happen easily. We can. So really important is to address the stability of the ankle, how the ankle is reacting to the ground. So we like to talk about with our patients a little bit about what's called the tripod foot. So that would mean the big toe joint called the first MTP the little toe and the heel forming a tripod situation and making sure that when we're in weight bearing or stance that we're stabilizing pressure equally through those three tripod points. So a bunch of balance drills, challenging the athlete's ability to stabilize their foot and ankle through those various stances that are required for their sport. And lastly, plyometrics is a really important for this. Plyometrics we use to improve the health of our joints and tendons and the overall reactivity of our foot and ankle. So performing plyometrics as soon as possible and building them, that's going to really um, challenge the ankle in great ways. The last thing is, can we prevent this? We'd like to think it's very possible if we focus on these items, which is a proper warm up. Mm making sure that the ankle is ranged and the tissues are contracted, warming up before our sport, wearing proper footwear, 
This is something I get with my dancers on a lot is I see them come into the studio in their flip-flops mm. and their slides or their Crocs. Sorry. I know that's <laughs> a big deal right now. <laughs> but we would love to see you in a shoe that promotes good foot posture and where your, fo your foot is not like clawing at the ground or wobbling excessively. Um, making sure that your load is properly managed. That means you're not building your activity level or participation too quickly, making sure that you give time for the body to adapt. Always emphasizing good technique and form is going to really help our ankles stay safe. And lastly, if you've had an ankle injury, make sure you complete your full course of physical therapy. If you have res remaining issues in terms of strength or flexibility, that could turn into impingement later. Wow. So much. Solid. So much to be learned. Solid. It's so good. Yeah. So talk to me about, um, before we finish and wrap this up, because this was such a wonderful discussion, but can you talk to me about like any particular patient that you've had, Dr. Bay, that has been a challenge um, because of this problem, whether, and if you recall if them being posterior, anterior, um, what are some of the challenges that like you ran into? Um, did, you know, whether it be like what was happening in terms of the patient's progression, whether it was steady and linear, um, whether it was, um, what sport they were in and the challenge of that piece of it, it could be kind of any challenges you've run into with this particular. Injury. Yeah. So I've had two dancers with posterior impingement. So they both were having the inability. One was on point to get fully over her foot on point, And the other was had a more of a contemporary dance emphasis than ballet. So she was on a regular heel raise, but struggling to get as high as she could. That second dancer also had problems with the push off phase of jumping. Mm -hmm. But the biggest challenge with dancers is always load management. There's usually a show coming or a competition coming. They're very hesitant to take time off. Mm -hmm. So really discussing with them how to, you know, take breaks and work in exercises between and what they really can skip and what they need to keep going with. Mm -hmm. Those are really important conversations to have. And of course, actually participating with your home exercises. When you do those, we see the changes. And when you don't, not much happens. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, can you think of anybody that you have maybe had that has had this or that you maybe didn't think had it, but it sounds like it could have been this problem? I have one patient right now, but his is a little bit more complex in the sense that he has multi-ligament injuries or tears. So mm -hmm. just the entire integrity of the ankle is compromised to begin with. Yeah. So it's just a lot of stability work yeah. for the most part. Yeah. We just have to stabilize it as much as possible with whatever he has left over. So yeah, it's going to be all muscular and tenderness in nature. Yeah. Cause when I th would think of an ankle impingement off the top of my head, I would think of a stiff joint, right? But it doesn't have to necessarily be a stiff joint. It could be like a, a unstable joint mm -hmm. that sh keeps getting stuck. Things get stuck in that area or whatever, or getting, getting pinched on. Yeah. So you might have ankle impingement. You may have never heard of it. Now you know a little bit more. But if you're having ankle pain or you have an injury and you need some help, we would love to help you. We treat patients here in our clinic in San Pedro, California on site, which is in LA, Los Angeles, California, or we treat patients virtually. So if you have an ankle injury, need some help, <clears throat> think this might be you, DM us, reach out. Um, if you're watching this right now on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, you can leave a comment there and let us know or reach out to us. You can like and subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have a lot of great things up on up on that channel right now. So go binge watch that and uh, you can see Dr. Bay talk about shoulder impingement. And you can also listen to her um, on our podcast, which is on any platform that you listen on, yeah, Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music. Um, wherever you listen, we have our podcast up for listening uh, as well. So we have those things going on. Uh, you can check out us, check us out on our website at physicaltherapysanpedro.com. All things about us, what we do, um, and how we try to work every day to help people in our community um, each and every day. Wonderful clinicians here who love sports physical therapy and are specialists. So we have all the goods for you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Bye.